Welcome to the Caltex Theatre, a full hour of dramatic entertainment broadcast over a nationwide network of stations throughout Australia. The Caltex Theatre is brought to you by Caltex Oil, marketers of over a thousand outstanding petroleum products, in association with Caltex dealers and distributors everywhere. Tonight in the Caltex Theatre, we present The Gift, the moving story of a woman who sought to atone for a wrong she had committed by an act of self-sacrifice, a gift made simply and with love, but one that was destined to change irrevocably the lives of those dearest to her. Starring in tonight's play, you will hear Patricia Kennedy and Douglas Kelly. <laughs> The Caltex Theatre presents The Gift, Act One. On a certain June day, a taxi turns into Harley Street, London, stops outside the house of Sir David Crosley, ophthalmic surgeon. A fair girl of perhaps 28 alights hesitantly and slowly crosses the footpath. A little later, she is upstairs. Her manner is strange, as if by dogged determination she is trying to hide the fact that the world about her is a blur. Come into the consulting room, Miss Julie. Mr. Ellis is upstairs with a patient, but Miss Hooper's there. Thank you, Mrs. Saunders. Are you all right, Miss? Yes, quite all right. The door's open, isn't it? Don't bother to come with me. I'll go through. Yes, Miss. I'll just close the door after you, Miss. <sighs> there should be a chair. Uh, about here. Oh. Thank heaven. Mrs. Saunders is... Well, good morning, Miss Dennison. We haven't seen you about for more than a month. I've been ill, Miss Hooper. An accident. I'm so sorry. I suppose Sir David's coming back to a deluge of patients. I'm afraid he is. Mr. Alistair's done a wonderful job, but so many won't see anyone but Sir David. Do you think you can possibly fit me in sometime? You mean you want to consult Sir David? Yes. But an eye specialist? It is my eyes, Miss Hooper. Oh. I didn't want Justin, uh, Mr. Alistair, to know. It's Sir David I want to see, no one else. Mr. Alistair's been worried not hearing from you all these weeks. Please, shall we leave it at that? I don't want to spoil their homecoming, my sisters and Sir David's. The boat trade's in. Oh, Julie. Hello, Justin. How are you after all this long time? Quite well, thank you. I thought you must be ill. I had a bad cold. I suppose you doctored yourself. Uh, well, Mr. Alistair, I'll check up on Sir David's appointment book. Yes. I wonder what sort of voyage Elizabeth and David have had. The Atlantic's been like glass. I may be going on a voyage myself sometime soon. Really? You're leaving, Sir David? I've applied for a job in South Africa. Oh. Your mother's there, isn't she? Thank you for remembering. I'm sorry I was so offhand when you phoned the other night, Justin. Is that what you call it? I really was feeling rather awful. Well, then why didn't you say so? Julie, what's happened? Happened? What's happened to us? Oh, nothing, as far as I know. Where is the job you've applied for? Cape Town. Uh, you were stationed there with the Wrens, weren't you, during the war? Yes. Did you like it? I don't think I'd have liked any country just then. Why? For rather a private reason. How have you managed with David in America, all right? Oh, I think so. Uh, don't change the subject. 
You don't look well, Julie. Studying too hard? No. Still wedded to the stink slab? No, not quite so much. Well, I hope you never look like a woman doctor. Oh, Justin. Will you marry me? Oh, please. Let's not get serious today. Why not? I've told you before. It's three years till I qualify. Are you sure it's only that? I've thought for a long time there might be someone else. I want to be a doctor. I've told you before. Where's my purse? I, I want a handkerchief. Julie. What was that? What have I done? You've smashed it. But what? What is it? The little Dresden Cupid. Oh. Julie. Mr. Ellison, Miss Dennison, they're here. I'm just going down to the door. Oh. Julie, what is it? What's happened to you? You're an eye specialist. Can't you guess? Julie. Are they here? I heard the bell. Not now, Justin. Oh, yes, yes, here they come. Oh, but let me take your bag, my lady. Julie. Oh, Julie, darling. Elizabeth, I was fretting when you didn't meet the boat train. I came here instead. Justin and Miss Hooper. Crossley? Everybody's Hello. here. Oh, this is wonderful. Uh, how was the trip, Lady Crossley? You look so well. Oh, the voyage was awful. But America was worth it. The food and the clothes. What I haven't brought this young sister of mine. Hidden about my person are four dozen nylons. Yes. <laughs> oh, I declared another four dozen. I have a knack of coming through on top. <laughs> now, Julie, let me have a proper look at you. Sir David. Oh, all here? This is fine. How are you, Julie? David, welcome home. Thanks. Justin? How are you, sir? Mr. Alistair, you have a patient waiting upstairs. Good Lord, have I? So I have. <laughs> then see you later, sir. <laughs> Miss Hooper has lists for you. I don't doubt it. Your tame Maharaja wouldn't even trust me with a refraction of his fifth son by his third wife, or vice versa. <laughs> Justin seems in good form. We all are. Everything looks so spick and span, Miss Hooper. Did David fall in love with America too, Beth? Well, I enjoyed what it had to offer. Which was shop, shop, shop from morning till night. Elizabeth, cease. <laughs> How did Mr. Alistair get on as my local, Miss Hooper? Oh, very well, sir. Mr. Gavin called him into consultation last week. Good. Oh, look, my Dresden Cupid. Why, it's smashed. I I'm sorry, Beth, I'm afraid... Did you break it? Oh, but Julie, it was my engagement present to David. Yes, I know. Oh, it can't be helped, darling, don't worry. Miss Hooper, let's have a look at my appointment, shall we? Yes, of course, sir. They're on my desk. I, I'm very sorry, Beth. I'll try to get you another. You'll do nothing of the kind. Besides, it wouldn't be quite the same. I'm sorry. Uh, David sounds well. <laughs> He's lost weight. America's been no holiday. In some shape or form, work always has to be included. He eats and breathes and dreams it. Yes, I know. <laughs> but of course you do. How stupid of me to tell you. Uh, will you have tea in here, my lady? Uh, yes, Mrs. Saunders, and today we can look through his correspondence. I brought you some nylons. Six pairs. Oh, oh my lady. I get them. Where would you put my travelling bag? In your bedroom. Come along, then I'll give them to you. Julie Paul, will you? Oh. I shan't be long. Oh, it's that good of you, my lady. Poor. Oh. Oh. I, I... I can't. I can't. Julie, can I help? How long have you been watching me, David? Long enough. And I've talked to Miss Hooper. Julie, what happened? Oh, David, thank heaven you're here. Steady, steady, take it easy. I've been counting the days. What happened? In the lab. I had a mixture of powders in the mortar. I was experimenting. I just added potassium chlorate. There was a blinding explosion. My Dear Julie. I'm sorry. Am I interrupting? Oh, come in here, Elizabeth. Julie, shall I tell her? I suppose. Is something wrong? Julie's had an accident. She's been... How bad is it, Julie? I can't see. Can't. When? When did this happen? Weeks ago. I, I didn't cable. I didn't want to worry you. But darling... Julie, look straight ahead. What can you distinguish? Light and darkness? Yes. How many fingers am I holding up? They're close to your eyes. Uh, two. Now, how many? I don't know. Oh, no. I'd like a few facts. Did they put you in a hospital? Yes. I left hospital on Monday. Mr. Dunlop didn't like it, but I was so afraid of not being David's patient. <laughs> I know you'll sum up so beautifully, David, that it won't all seem so... so... 
<laughs> I wish I were dead. Oh, darling, what am I to do? I'm useless now. I'll never be a doctor and no money. Am I going to be like this for the rest of my life? Am I, David? I can't tell you that without extensive examination. But it's obvious. She must stay here, Elizabeth. Yes, of course. Oh, but your homecoming... Oh, dearest, I... it isn't our honeymoon. We've been married eight years. Now, that's settled. It may be a long job, my dear child. I can bear anything, so long as there's hope. And now you're back. Both of you. said you wanted me, David. Oh, come in, Julie. Uh, can you find a chair? Yes, I think so. <sighs> Good. Getting quite proficient. Oh, it's amazing what one can do when one has to. Is Elizabeth coming down? No, I made her go out. She's hardly left my side these last three weeks. Well, now, tell me, how did you like Mr. Gavin? Oh, very much. Why did you send me to him? Because I value his opinion. I've just been hearing it and comparing it with my own. Yes? I have good news for you, Julie. Oh. Your condition is one of the few that respond to surgery. An operation? Uh, to use the technical term, a keratoplasty. In simpler language, we graft the healthy cornea from the eyes of the newly dead into the eyes of the blinded living. That operation? Oh, David. You're very fortunate. Only the outer coverings, the windows of the eyes are damaged, not the optic nerves. If they'd been affected too, I shouldn't be able to help you in any way. I can't believe it. It's like a reprieve from death. Shall I be able to go on with medicine? Mm, I hope so, with a little help. Help? Uh, probably in the form of contact lenses. Contact lenses? They hardly show, do they? No, they hardly show. In fact, they're rather becoming. David, when can you operate? When? I... I wish I could tell you. What's the matter? Your voice suddenly sounds so flat. What's the matter? My dear, this operation is unlike any other in that it depends on the generosity of human beings for its vital ingredients. The cornea? Yes. And they're scarce. They're very scarce. Why? Oh, many reasons. It's a comparatively new operation. The public aren't used yet to willing their eyes, or if they do think of it, they dislike it. Someday they'll see that it's rather wonderful leaving behind something that means so much to others. Elizabeth and I have both willed our eyes. Then, then it will take time. Yes, Julie, time. You'll have to wait your turn just as hundreds of others must wait theirs. I'll ring the eye hospital and have your name put on their list. List? Have you noticed that there seem to be lists for everything these days? Lists and cues? How long do you think I'll have to wait? I don't know. Months? Possibly. Years, perhaps? No, I don't know, Julie. Years? Steady. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. For a moment I thought... Well, at least I know where I stand. Hello there. May I come in? Oh, yes, do. Dear. I've been shopping. Oh, needn't I tell you? <laughs> Oh, lovely night, yes. My dear Elizabeth, you bought countless numbers in New York. Most of which the ship's laundry unaccountably lost. And this one's a hat. Juliet. Wait a minute. You haven't heard from Gavin? Yes. And? He agrees with me that corneal grafts are possible. Julie. Oh, my darling. David's never wrong. Never, never wrong. Yes, it's wonderful. You don't sound... I'm sorry to butt in, sir. Yeah, what is it, Justin? You promised to take a look at my patient. He's upstairs. Oh, yes, yes. Coming. Hello, Julie. Very but. Grand news, isn't it? Come along, Justin. See you soon, Julie. You're not happy about this. Why? I'm one of the fortunate few, Beth, who can benefit by an operation. And yet it might be years before I can have it. Yes. David told me about that. I'd be able to see within a few weeks if the cornea were available. But they're not, so... That's that seems incredible that I should grouse when 20 minutes ago I was trying to face blindness. 
You were saying you bought a new hat. Uh, yes, sir. What sort of hat? Uh, a rather fussy hat. Uh, I couldn't resist it. Mm, now I look at it again, I see it's far too fussy. To wear with spectacles. Spectacles? I shall make quite a feature of them. Numbers of pairs, all different colours and shapes like the Americans. But you've never needed them, Beth. Your sight's always been wonderful. Yes, fortunately, because now I'm going to give part of it to you. What did you say? I'm going to share my good eyesight with you. To prevent your breaking any more cupids. Yes. And now don't argue. With David doing it, no one will be able to tell the real eyes. I'm they... going. Right away from here, I'm going. Darling, no. We've got to be practical over this. Thanks to Father's genius for always backing the wrong horse, you and I have never had any money to fall back on. And you know how I feel about you. More as my child. No. And there's medicine. I'll give up medicine. It would kill you. I'll, I'll marry Justin. You don't love him, do you? I might learn to. Beth, I don't understand you. Only saints are so unselfish. I know now why David loves you. You haven't told him. He'll understand. No, don't talk about it. I never want you to talk about it anymore. Yes, and I see him again. Oh, Beth, you please don't. Be sir. Well, how is Julie feeling now, darling? Better? It's damnable to have to wait. No, I... David, I, I don't want Julie to wait. Oh, but my dear. I'm thinking of that boy you operated on in Boston. Wasn't it his mother who donated the eye? David, stop her. I won't listen. What do you mean, Elizabeth? I could always wear spectacles. Fashionable ones. What? Don't listen to her. Don't listen to her. That's wonderful of you, Lady Crossley. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Dustin. What about some sherry, David? David, I won't let her. You know I won't. If you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss it at the moment. Oh, what about our dinner date, Julie? Dinner? I don't know anything about it. Oh, may all the saints forgive you. I asked you yesterday. Oh, yes, do go, Julie. It'll do you all the good in the world. No, I... Please. Please. Oh, all right. I'll go and dress. That's wonderful. Shall I help you upstairs? No, thank you. I can manage. I've learned to feel my way. Well, I'd uh, better go and book a table. Thanks, Lady Crossley, for talking her into it. Uh, I'll use the phone in my office. Don't be angry, David. Please say something. Elizabeth, Julie must just wait her turn. Others have had to. She can't wait for years. She wants to be a doctor more than anything else in this world. And you want it for her. You believe in her. And after all, I, I shan't look so very different, shall I? That's hardly the point. Oh, but it is to me, darling. I'm dreadfully vain. David, I, I do hate it when you're disapproving. But I can't help it. This is the chance I've been waiting for. Chance? David, I... I'd want to do this for Julie, even if Cornelia were easy to come by. I want to do it, and that's final, David. Something's behind all this. Ever since we all met at Portsmouth nine years ago, I thought your relationship to Julie abnormally protective. Oh. And now you want to give her a part of yourself. It's as if you've taken something from her, something you must replace. I didn't know you were so observant, David. You going to tell me? If you'll give me a glass of sherry, I probably shall. Here. Thank you. I don't know if I can bear to tell you, but I must if I'm to get you to agree, and you must agree, you must. Well? This will hurt you very deeply. It may even mean I'll lose you altogether. Even so, it... It came to me quite suddenly that this is a dispensation that has been given to me. Oh, David, God alone knows the agony of my mind. What is it? Tell me. When, when Julie and I volunteered for overseas service, we volunteered together. Yes, I remember. But her orders came through at once to go to South Africa. And mine didn't. <laughs> that was the luck of it. No, David. It was possible in my job to send her abroad at once and put my own name back even remove it altogether. And that's what I did, David. You mean... That... Julie didn't know that I loved you, but I knew that she loved you. She told me. I see. I cheated over those lists so that I could stay on in Portsmouth with you. I was afraid you were interested in her. I, I was frightened of her. Am I really to believe this, Elizabeth? Doesn't tally with my character as you know it. Not quite. Who knows anyone? Who knows oneself? I did it. 
After we were married and I was able to think more calmly and sanely, I began to realize what I'd done. David, I don't know to this day if you loved her. I, I robbed her of the chance of finding out. I felt... As the years have passed, there isn't anything I haven't felt. She's there almost perpetually in my mind. If only she'd fall in love again. I should have known that to love you is incurable. Oh, my dear. You see now, don't you? I took you away. I must give back in some way. She'll never agree. You must persuade her. No, Elizabeth. I didn't tell you she's still in love with you. I know. But you're not in love with her. You are in love with me. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. Elizabeth. Oh, David, my darling, don't you see? The operation will be nothing compared to the confession. If you don't agree I should find somebody, I will, will, even if it means going all over the world that I do. I shall find someone. I shall. Elizabeth, quiet, quiet. Tell me you will. Tell me. You will, won't you? All right. I will. Oh, darling, thank you. What I've told you won't make any difference to us. We mustn't let it. You know, you mean to me what your work means to you. It's the reason for your life. And you're mine. Dearest Elizabeth. You... You cast a spell over me. Don't ever break it. Never. Let them show me what you feel. Oh, I, I'm English to the core. <laughs> a cigarette. That's what I want now. Here. Thank you. David, when can you operate? I can't operate on you, darling. You're my wife. Oh, but... Uh, it's an unwritten law. Any man who takes on the added responsibility of operating on his own wife is at once emotionally involved. I'm not going to operate on you, and you should know better than to ask me. But you're prepared to operate on Julie. Julie's my sister-in-law, no more, no less. You're my wife, whom I love. Oh. Oh. In fact, as things are now, I can't operate on her either. You don't mean that, surely. The same man should do both. No, I shall hand you both over to Gavin. Gavin? Well, he's one of the leading ophthalmic surgeons. You are the leading ophthalmic surgeon. Oh, rubbish. It's not rubbish. Even in America, they say oh, that... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Julie, not down yet. Come in, Justin. I'll go up and fetch her. Oh, don't bother, Lady Crossley. It's no bother. Did you manage to book a table? Yes, quite easily. I never have any trouble, provided I remember to call myself doctor. They like to feel as one in the house. <laughs> I I'll get Julie. Help yourself to a sherry. Thanks. My wife's persuaded me to agree with what she wants in principle. She has? But I've just told her that I can't operate myself on either of them. Not Julie either. But who will? Gavin, I think. Gavin? He's very sound. Yes, sir. Well, what have you got to say? Come along, out with it. Very well, sir. Gavin's a competent surgeon, but this job demands a brilliant one. It's too serious for you to underestimate yourself. Underestimate myself? Isn't it my personal feelings that have to be estimated? Confound it, before I can touch Julie, I shall have to operate on my own wife. If anything went wrong, I'd not only be responsible, I'd be unnerved. And yet, within a matter of hours, because the cornea won't keep, I'd have to go back to the theatre, back to Julie. That's the position. No, sir. No. That's only the position if something goes wrong. And isn't the main thing to consider Julie's sight? To make sure that the one eye she'll have to see through for goodness knows how long should be in as good a condition as possible. The operation on my wife... Is simple compared with the graft. But the risks are greater. There's no denying that. You've done it countless times. And never without an unpleasant feeling of... Of suspense. Perhaps because it demands a general anaesthetic. Perhaps because I hate removing an organ. In her case, a perfectly healthy organ. No, it's wrong. I'm wrong to give in. Would you consider operating on Julie only? What? And let Gavin operate on my wife? It's better that the same man tackled both jobs. But if something went wrong and you hadn't operated... If, 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 I don't know. The answer's so obvious. And yet I feel as if I'm being torn. What is right? What is wrong? Justin? Are you there, Justin? Yes, here, Julie. Here. I'm sorry I've been so long. Where's Elizabeth? Upstairs. Well, I just call a taxi. Shouldn't be hard at this time of night. All right. David. Elizabeth's told me. How much? Everything. 
I see. Well, she has. We must all face up to it and then put it right behind us. Yes. I've agreed to what she wants for her own peace of mind, Julie. But I can't agree. Don't you see that what she feels amounts to a mania? She'll get over it. She'll have to. Julie, she's made you this offer and she'll never withdraw it. You know that. It will always be there, tempting you. I don't want it. But you do. You do deep down, Julie. Nothing matters to you more than your sight. Does it? Please don't. Does ask. it? I tell you. I... No. Nothing matters. I'll get my appointments book. No, David. I... Darling, here's your back. And a scarf. I, I thought it might look pretty with that frock. Is that from America, too? There'll be a certain number of arrangements to make before I can operate. Before you can operate, David? Next Tuesday, I'm at the hospital. Wednesday, outpatients. Would Friday suit you, Julia? I... I... Would it, my dear? Whatever suits... Beth suits me. Elizabeth? Yes, darling. Friday would suit me. I'll tell Miss Hooper to book the theatre for nine and also for some time during the afternoon. Friday. Yes, Friday. And then we'll be committed, won't we? All three of us. And so the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Caltex Theatre play, The Gift. Anywhere you care to travel, motorists agree. The Caltex Star stands for better service. Drive right in and see. Caltex Butane Boosted is the gasoline made to take better care of your car's performance. Caltex Butane Boosted gasolines give faster starting, smoother acceleration and more economical running. Next time you fill up, change to Caltex. See if you don't feel the difference. See if your car doesn't respond more readily, tick over more smoothly and steadily. The gasoline's designed for today's faster pace, Caltex Butane Boosted gasolines. The Caltex Theatre now presents Patricia Kennedy and Douglas Kelly in The Gift, Act Two. It is the fatal Friday morning. Miss Hooper arrives at Sir David's consulting room well before nine. She is pale and tense, and becomes even paler when Mrs. Saunders meets her in the doorway. For Mrs. Saunders' face is streaming with tears. What's the matter? What's wrong? Oh, Miss, Lady Crosley, she's that sick. Lady Crosley? But the operation, it was for 9.30. Sir David operated on her two hours ago. What? He was up all night on another case, and he might have to go back to it. Oh. That's why he operated so early. <gasps> oh, dear. Oh, wait a minute, Mrs. Saunders. Please try to keep calm. Yes. Sir David Crossley's secretary? Yes, sister? One moment. Mrs. Saunders, Sir David hasn't been back here, has he? No, I ain't seen him since... No, sister. No, I'm quite sure. Is it... Lady Crossley? I see. How is she? Yes, yes, I'll tell him as soon as he comes in. Sister says Sir David left the nursing home to come here more than half an hour ago. But, but it's only just across the road. Yes, yes, I know. Miss Julie wants to speak with him. Oh, the poor little thing. Imagine how she must be feeling, Miss, waiting to be operated on after this. Uh, I wish I could just run over with a few flowers. Do you think I could? I see no reason why not. Thanks, miss. It'd be something to do besides just waiting, wouldn't it, miss? Uh, is Sir David here? Oh, Mr. Elliston, is he giving you a start? No, he isn't. Well, I've been to the hospital for him. I, I was sure he'd be back here by now. The nursing home phoned. He left there half an hour ago. Well, that's, that's funny. 
Mr. Alistair, what happened? Lady Crossley. She collapsed soon after he started. Oh. It wasn't his fault, wasn't anyone's fault. But you can imagine how he felt and having to carry on as if nothing had happened. She'll recover. Of course she'll recover. I don't know. Mr. Alistair. He took all this on against his will. <gasps> Miss Denison, does she know anything no. about... Julie doesn't know yet, and she mustn't. Do you think that... If it is, try to behave normally. Oh, you're back, Justin. Yes, sir. Good morning, Sir David. Good morning, Miss Hooper. What's the news from the hospital, Justin? Must I operate? I think he'll keep for another day, sir. Good. I think you'd better try to cancel my appointments for today, Miss Hooper. Uh, I'll take the ones you can't cancel, sir. Thank you. Sister Wooler phoned a few minutes ago. Miss Dennison would like to see you when you have a moment. I'll go across as soon as I've swallowed something. Saunders is getting me some sandwiches and coffee. I'll go down and hurry him up. Couldn't you try to take some sort of a rest, sir? Rest? I know it sounds futile, but up all night and then what's happened this morning? You are operating again today. It's probably a blessing in disguise that I am. Is it, sir? Why? Operating at such tension isn't a very pleasant memory. In other words, if you've had a bad fall, you seldom remount unless you do it at once. I can't believe that, sir. Not of you. What unpredictable things nerves are. I thought mine were, well, if not made of cast iron, at least controllable. Was there anything else I could have done for Elizabeth? Absolutely nothing. And you pulled her through, sir. I know there wasn't. I know, and yet I keep asking myself, was there? Incessantly. I've been sitting in Mary Laburne Church. Well, don't look so worried, Justin. I often go to church. Yes, I know. Is there anything I can do, sir? No, nothing. Unless there's Julia. I'd be grateful if you'd spend a little time with her. Here's the tray. Oh, and Mr. Alistair, Sir David's first patient's arrived, and she's quite willing to see you. All right, send her up to my room. Do try to swallow this coffee, Sir David. Yes, I shall. I'll send Mrs. Roberts up, Mr. Alistair. Mrs. Roberts? Oh, yes, yes, incipient cataracts. Quiet little woman with a charming smile. Well, I'll, I'll see her. Lady Crossley, she's going to be all right, sir. Thank you, Dustin. But I'm afraid her heart is in a pretty precarious state. I see, sir. I see. Mrs. Alders, I must see you. Oh, miss, you shouldn't have come. David. My dear child. You mustn't blame Mrs. Saunders. She thought I knew. She told you about Elizabeth. She's afraid to come in, but don't blame her. David, what happened? Why didn't you come and tell me? I'm your doctor now, and you're my patient, and you shouldn't be here. Why should Beth collapse on the operating table? Was it her heart? Yes. I can't believe it. She's never had trouble with her heart. That we know of. She's never had an operation before. It was some hidden weakness that didn't show up until... But she'll be all right, won't she? I, I think so. Miss Dennison. Uh, ring the nursing home, Miss Hooper, and tell them Julie's here. They'll be worried. Yes, sir. I wish you could persuade him to rest, Miss Dennison. He's been up all night. I'll ring. You've been up with Beth? No, a glaucoma case. I'll take you back to the nursing home now. Miss Hooper can take me back. You must rest. Oh, that's impossible. But you can't go on indefinitely without sleep. It won't be the first time. No, but... Uh... Yes, Julie? Nothing. What were you going to say? Only that this afternoon you're operating on me. Yes, I know that. David, couldn't you put it off till tomorrow? The graft must be done on the same day. Oh, yes, of course. How stupid of me. Oh, David, please, for my sake, just take an hour or so off. I know you want to be with Beth, but they'd ring you if there was any change. I daren't leave her. I must be there. She's not going to die, is she? No. No, she's going to live. She's got to live. David... I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. Would you rather Mr. Gavin operated on me? Would you rather he did? I don't know. I was thinking of you. I'm very willing to operate on you. Thank you, David. But in the circumstances, I think it might be better if you didn't. You're tired to death and worried to death. And you want to be with her. And I want you to be with her. Oh, Julie, my dear. Please don't touch me. What? was unforgivable of me. I'm sorry. Julie. 
Mr. Wool is on the phone, sir. I've switched the call through. Oh, thank you. Hello. Yes, sister. Yes, at once. Elizabeth's asking for me. Then go. I'll come after you. I'll get your things. Quickly, David. You'll be quicker without me. Yes, yes, all right. Mr. David. I can't stay, Justin. Ring Gavin for me, will you? Ask him when he could operate on Julie this afternoon. Tell him it must be this afternoon. Gavin, sir. I can't stay. Elizabeth's asking for me. Justin, where are you? Here, Julie. Here, right beside you. Do you think Beth... She's conscious if she's asking for him. That means she must be better. Oh, yes. Yes. And at least I've saved him from operating on me. How, Julie? I've told him I'd rather Mr. Gavin did. I see. Justin, hold me. Yes. Don't ever let go of me. Not even in the theatre this afternoon. There's nothing to be frightened about, my darling. I'm trying not to be frightened. How long will it take? Half an hour? Just about. And I'll be conscious? Conscious with a difference. Uh, David will see to that. Mr. Gavin, you mean? Uh, hadn't you better phone him? I don't want to phone him, Julie. But David told you to. Only because you told him to. I wish you hadn't, Julie. But why? David's nearly mad with worry. He's had no sleep. The very last thing he wants to do is operate on me. Did he say so? Well, not in actual words. Please phone Mr. Gavin, Justin. <sighs> Sir David's the better man, Julie. Of course he's the better man. But today, he can't give me his best today, Justin. It's not there to give. And it's today that matters to me. Tomorrow will be too late. All right, I'll tell Miss Hooper. What's the matter? If only I could see your face. Get Mr. Gavin on the phone, will you, Miss Hooper, and switch it through here? Yes, Mr. Alliston. Uh, come back, Justin. If only I could see you. Don't you realize I'm doing David a favor? No, I don't think I do. But you... Alistair speaking. Yes, would you put Mr. Gavin's office through? I'll still be David's patient, won't I? Thank you. What are you thanking me for? I'm not. I'm thanking Gavin's secretary. She's about to put me through to the great man. Why does your voice sound so sarcastic? I wish I could see you. See what you're thinking. Justin... Be careful getting up. Am I going to knock something over? Not if you stand still. You're keeping something from me, aren't you? No. That's not a very convincing no. Justin! Surely you should know that to someone who can't see, silence can be unbearable. I'm sorry. What are you keeping from me? Is it something about David? Is it? Yes. I don't think he'll ever operate again if he doesn't operate on you this afternoon. What did you say? Once a surgeon loses his nerve... David lose his nerve? Why should you assume that... I'm not assuming. He told me. Uh, yes? Is he free now? Thank you. Put the receiver down, Justin. She's connecting. Put it down. Let me hear the click. Very well. Now, where's my coat? On the chair. Which chair? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get it for you. And then take me across to the nursing home, would you? You make me feel very small. Very humble and very small. David is rather more important than I am. I... Who's that? Oh, you are. You're still here, Julia. Sir David. David? Beth, uh, how is she? Perfectly peaceful. Oh, thank God, thank God. But... Yes, you, you must go back, Julia. I'm going. You weren't long, David. I... I forgot an appointment. A patient all the way from... from the Lake District. We'll... we'll go straight away, Julie. Now. David, Mr. Gavin's not free. Do you think you could take the operation after all? Yes. Yes, all right. Thank you. Mr. Alistair, Mr. Gavin's secretary just rang to say you were... Uh, I'll talk to her. Sir David, you're back. Uh, Julie, you go ahead with Miss Hooper. I'll follow you right away. Yes, Justin. I'll speak to the secretary. Am I to take you back to the nursing home, Miss Denison? Yes, please. Make up your mind. There's nothing to be frightened about, Julie. I have made it up. That's the spirit. Uh, Miss Hooper? This way, Miss Dennison. I'll come in and see you, Julie, before they take you to the theatre. Thank you, David. Oh, God. Sir. Well, Justin, at least Julie misunderstood what you meant, sir. 
Yes. I... Yes, yes, yes. Sister found this little note among my wife's... among Elizabeth's things. You, you want me to read it? Yes. Would you like me to... to fulfill her wish for you? Thank you. Then I'd better go across and do it at once. Uh, Miss Hooper, phone Julie's home, will you? I've been held up and I should be fetching her. That's all right, Mr. Alistair. I've already sent Saunders. Oh, Miss Hooper, you're a ruddy marvel. I don't know what I'd do without you. You won't have to. Oh, but I shall. They're giving me the job in South Africa. Mr. Alistair. Mm, rather breathtaking, isn't it? I'm still afraid it's too big for me. Utter nonsense. This is wonderful. Isn't Miss Dennison delighted? Well, I don't know. I haven't told her. But... Not yet. Uh, you're one of the family, Miss Hooper. I can talk to you. You know you can. Are you waiting till she gets the verdict on her sight? Not that, no. When I asked her to marry me months ago, I thought I stood a chance. Lady Crossley was alive. Lady Crossley? Julie's in love with him, Hooper. I've known that since the day of the operation. It explains so many things. Now, now that he's free, how can I compare myself with him? Why ever should you? This is the first time I've seen you with an inferiority complex. She wants to love me. I know that. But now he's free and desperately lonely. They've got the same interests, even. That'll be Miss Dennison. Mrs. Saunders will bring her up. Hooper, what am I to do? If I'm to marry her and take her to South Africa, we must decide now. I don't know, Mr. Alistair. These things can't be forced. I'll be all right from here, Mrs. Saunders. Thank you. Miss Dennison! Tell me if I'm likely to knock into anything. You're, you're doing fine. Justin, you here. You look fine, considering you only left the nursing home yesterday. Sure, I look a wreck. I feel no. it. Oh, I'm talking of nursing homes. I'm due across there right away. Give them my love. I shall. And uh, good luck with the examination, Julie. I'll just get my things. I hope you don't mind waiting, Miss Dennison. I don't usually make Saturday morning appointments, but Sir David was so anxious to see you. Did he say that? Yes. I see. You mustn't worry. I can't help it. My sight hasn't improved, Miss Hooper. In either eye. You know they replaced both cornea. Yes, I, I know. And David never comes to see me. At least, not alone. He's been working terribly hard. No one seems able to stop him now. Has anyone ever been able to stop him? Well, yes. Very occasionally, Lady Crossley was able to. But... Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Dennison. It's all right. I say, Miss Hooper. I'm blowed if I can find my ophthalmoscope. What, again? I've looked everywhere. Must have left it on a bus. Mm, I'll go and see. You know, you never look properly. <laughs> Justin, you're hopeless. Just wait till we're married. I'll reform you. Married? But of course married. You asked me, didn't you? Yes. Julie, I've got it. The South African job. Got it? How wonderful. When do we start? Not for two months. That gives us time to think. Haven't we thought over these past months? Darling. What is it? There's something I've guessed. I guessed about it when you let David operate on you, even though you were so scared. I... There was someone else, wasn't there? There was David. Oh. You've loved him for years, haven't you? Yes, I've loved him for years. And? And until lately, I'd never questioned my love. Lately, I've had more time to think than in the whole of my life. I wish I could put my thoughts into words. Try, darling, try. I'm beginning to see... I don't think my love for David is the kind that belongs to marriage. Julie. Is it because I admire him so much? I've always thought of him as someone apart. I know I always shall. More than anything, I've wanted to do his work because he's made me feel it's the most worthwhile. Justin, it's your work too. What am I going to do? About me? How am I going to find out if I love you? Your instincts will tell you. But I... You can't reason with love. It's either there or it isn't. Wanting to love someone just isn't enough. Oh, Justin. If only I could see you, I believe I'd know. Well, Mr. Alistair, this time you really must have left it on a bus. What? 
Oh, my ophthalmoscope. Uh, Miss Dennison, Sir David was just crossing the road a few minutes ago. Uh, oh. uh, would you go into the consulting room? He'll be ready for you in a few minutes. Thank you. It's this way, isn't it? Uh, shall I? Uh, no, no, I, I like to manage. Door? Oh, yes, door. Ah, now I'm right. She's so terribly tense. Mr. Alistair, what are her chances? I don't know any more than you do, Hooper. That's the worst of the operation, the uncertainty. Oh, still here, Justin? I was just leaving for the nursing home, sir, but I have mislaid my ophthalmoscope. Oh, I see. Uh, fetch him one of mine, will you, Miss Hooper? Very well, sir. Uh, Mr. Alistair was telling me he's landed the South African job. You have? Congratulations. Thank you. They're lucky to get you. Coming from you, that means a great deal to me. Uh, Julie's waiting. Oh, is she? By the way, I saw Gavin this morning, first time alone since my wife died. Oh? He tells me he was perfectly free to take that operation. Uh, yes, I know, sir. Uh, Julie changed her mind. Did she? Why? I, uh, I don't know, sir. I shall hate losing you, Justin. So shall I hate No, going no, to... no, don't worry about me. There's my work. Elizabeth once said it was the reason for my life. There was another reason. But I believe that someday she and I will be together again. Yes, sir. When I was a small boy, I knew another small boy, Justin. He had an appalling squint. It nearly ruined his life. Poor John. I can't tell you the compassion I felt for him. I promised him, oh, so very solemnly, as children do, that one day I'd make his eyes straight. I did, twelve years ago. I see, sir. Those days are remote now, but I don't feel any differently. I knew then that it was my, awful word, vocation. I know it still. Well, Julie's waiting. And I must go across to the home. I'll come back as quickly as I can. This verdict means a lot to me, too. I'll go in and see her. David? I'll just darken the room a bit, Julie. How are you feeling? Fairly well. A little wobbly about the knees. I shall be pleased when this is over. I'm not going to hurt you. You never do. Hmm. Quite comfortable? Yes. I'm just putting on what's called my binocular loop. Yes, I know. Now keep quite still. Head up a little. Now look to the right. Now left. Now straight ahead. Now, I'm blacking out the left eye, and I want you to tell me what you can see with spectacle lenses. Not contact lenses? Oh, no, no. Before we can try the finished article, we must first find out how to make it up. I'm putting a lens over the right eye and lighting up the letters at the end of the room. Now, can you see any of them? No. Only a blob of light. Now with this extra lens. David, I can see the board. Well, I should hope so. I'll move the lenses slightly. Better? Yes, yes it is. Is it X? No, R. In actual fact, it's A. Oh. Well, now we'll give that eye a rest and try the left eye. Oh, David. Right. Go ahead. The letters. Is it? T? Correct. Go on. I, I can't see. No. No. Just a wild guess. D? No, never mind. We'll take them off. Oh. David, it's not going to work, is it? I'm not going to be able to see. Now be patient. I'm sorry. Now... I want to give each eye a drop of anaesthetic. Why? Because contact lenses fit right onto the eye. And until you get used to them, they're apt to hurt. Oh, I see. Now look straight ahead. This may sting a bit, but it won't for long. Now close your eyes. Did that drop hurt? A little. Now the other. Oh, good girl. Shut your eyes. The drops will take about 40 seconds to work, and 
Meantime, I want to tell you something about your eyes. What? Keep them shut, Julie. Oh, I'm sorry. What about them? It's about the... the second cornea, where it came from. Oh. I wanted to tell you before, Julie, but I was afraid of delaying your recovery. I have a scrap of paper in my pocket that was found among Elizabeth's things. Elizabeth. The first message is written across it in ink, Julie. It says, if anything should happen to me, don't forget that I, like you, have willed my eyes that someone else may see. And scribbled across the corner in pencil out these three words. Let Julie benefit. That's all. I've cheated myself that I haven't known. But I have. How are your eyes now? Quite numb? Yes. I'll just change the letters on the board. You all right? Yes. I'm not going to break down. I know. I'm inserting contact lenses now. Uh, look down, Julie. Look up. And I want you to remember that though this is the finished article, it's not the made-to-measure one yet. Yes, David. Now, the big moment. Look at the letters, Julie. Which ones can you read? Yes, David. I can see the top line and the second quite clearly. The third? X, U, T. Good. Now the other one. David! I've changed the letters. Now, three lines. I don't know. The fourth line, beginning W. A, H, D, F. Go on. No, don't ask me to. Don't you realise I can see? I can see. Of course. Please, let me look around just for a minute. Would you mind? Mind? Sunshine. Light. Where's the mirror? Oh, there. But I look just the same. Or is it that I can't see well enough to... No, you look just the same. And yet I'm seeing with different eyes. With... with... You're very much thinner and greyer. Am I? The street. I must look at the street. David, is that Justin crossing the road? Am I really seeing him or am I dreaming? You're really seeing him. Oh, dear. David, what you've done for me. What you've done for me too, Julie. I... You let me operate on you. But I... Go and meet Justin. You'll have a good deal to say to him. Yes, I shall. He said my instincts would tell me and they have. Go and meet him. Oh, David, I wish I could tell you. Thank you. Go along. You and Beth... Oh... Oh, Miss Hooper, there's no reason for you to wait. Yes, yes, I'll be going on working, but I can manage quite well alone. Enjoy your weekend, won't you? So ends our Caltech's play, The Gift. In a moment, we will give you tonight's cast and tell you about next week's presentation in the Caltech's Theatre. The Gift was written by Mary Lumsden and adapted for radio by Kay Keaveney. In the starring roles, you heard Patricia Kennedy as Julie Dennison and Douglas Kelly as Sir David Crossley. The supporting cast was as follows. Elizabeth Crossley, Mary DeShano, Justin Alliston, Richard Davies, Miss Hooper, Madeline Hurl, 
Mrs. Saunders, Beryl Walker. Now this is your compere, Rick Hutton, inviting you to be listening next week for another outstanding production in the Caltex Theatre and saying good night on behalf of your hosts, Caltex Oil, marketers of Caltex Super Gasoline and Caltex Gasoline, the world-famous RPM 1030 Special Motor Oil and Marfac Lubrication. <laughs>